Do you guys remember the last time you showered, staring down at that bar of soap and thinking to yourself, I wish this was more fun. How do I make an already slippery thing slipperier? Why is soap so boring? Me too. Thankfully, Lush, the biggest soap and bath bomb provider on the market right now, has come up with a solution, jelly soap. Lush came out with jelly soap back in 2014, capitalizing on the world's fascination with all things jelly. Jellied anything seems pretty unnecessary most of the time, and yet we managed to find ways to insert this wriggly phenomenon into as many things in our lives as possible. But not only were consumers ready and willing to jellyfy their showers, but crafters everywhere became obsessed with recreating this soap jelly in their own homes. On YouTube alone, there are countless videos documenting all of the attempts made at recreating this. Some more successful than others. It's literally dirty dishwater. There were a couple that had somewhat congealed. I could try and get this one out. Oh God, it's like the end of a Saw movie. So today, at the request of absolutely nobody, I will be inserting my own attempt into the archive. To start, I'm gonna do what so few, if any, did and that is actually look at Lush's ingredient list for their soap jellies. The ingredients that Lush uses to turn their soap into jelly comprise of three main ones, and that is carrageen, glycerin, and propylene glycol. It is the combination of these three that make the soap jelly the consistency that it is. And neat fact, Lush actually has a patent on this. Of course they do. So to recreate this product, I needed to find those same ingredients. I already had some glycerin on hand, so all I needed to find was some carrageenan and propylene glycol. I was successful in finding carrageenan from Winnie Point Soap Supplies, but propylene glycol proved to be a little bit more evasive. So I gave up trying. I don't know if it'll turn out, but if it doesn't, then we know that propylene glycol is pretty much an essential ingredient in turning luscious soap into jelly. So we'll see. Now that I had the essential ingredients, I needed to find out exactly how Lush did this. And thankfully, they have a how-to video on how they made their soap jellies available on YouTube. And I wanted this to be a successful video, so I brought out my notebook and decided to write some notes on the key steps to turning my soap into jelly. Hi, I'm Taylor. Hey, Taylor. To start, we make a calming lavender infusion with real lavender petals. Make a lavender tea. Okay, easy enough. Next, we create two color mixes, a beautiful blue and a pretty pink. Uh, okay, but what are they putting the color in? And mix them together with our soap base. What's the base made out of? Then we blend it with our lavender infusion and a heap of shimmering plastic-free glitter. A heap of shimmering plastic-free glitter. Okay. Next, let's add our carrageenan extract. I got that. Nice. Finally, we blend in the best-selling sleepy scent of Tonka, Ylang Ylang, and Lavender to soothe busy minds. Glass is fragrance. We swirl together the two color mixes in our recycled plastic pots and leave everything to set. Then we take the industrial dispenser to dis... Wait, it was at this point I realized I couldn't exactly follow Lush's process due to the fact that I'm making this out of my home and not a big industrial warehouse with big industrial equipment, but I'm gonna do my best. And in this video, they actually had a lot of great clues, so that's a good start. For the colors, it looks like they are using a water-soluble dye, and then for the pearlescent quality to their Twilight Jelly, they add some sort of shimmery mica. Their soap base is likely their water and surfactants blended together. And then they add their carrageenan. in, and can you see how it's a liquid viscosity? That's likely because they dissolve the carrageenan powder in glycerin and propylene glycol first in order to have it disperse more easily into the water and the colors. And all of these ingredients are heated to make binding a lot easier, but once you combine your ingredients, you're going to have to boil them like you do with most gelatins in order for that to turn into a jelly and after it's boiled, then you can pour it into some sort of mold for it to solidify after a few hours. Okay, simple enough. Let's do this. Welcome to my soap studio. 
I've got the recipe right here. And when thinking about my version of this, I could have gone the easy route, did one color, but when I saw their Twilight Jelly, I instantly decided to make an already complicated thing even more complicated. So I decided to try to dupe that. <laughs> So that's what we're going to be doing today. A few tweaks and changes on my part. They used something that they called a lavender concoction for their water in this recipe. I don't, I mean, I don't have time for that. So I'm not going to do that. We're just going to use regular distilled water for my soap jellies. But if you want to do it exactly like Lush, they, they did that. But pretty much my recipe is close to what they've got. Interestingly, they did not list a preservative in their ingredients and they described this soap jelly as being self-preserving. I have no idea what that's about. So we're going to use a preservative today and because we are working with much hotter temperatures than I normally do, I'm going to need a preservative that can withstand a bit of a higher temperature when it's added. So today we're going to be using Optifin Plus. But other than that, it's pretty close. <laughs> so Twilight is two different colors. So to mimic that, I'm going to be doing two versions of the same thing. Just basically the whole process, but color them in two different colors so that I can pour them at around the same time to recreate that really cool dual color look that Twilight has. So, so my first step is going to melt down my surfactant into my distilled water. So the surfactant that Lush uses for their soap jellies is something called sodium cocoa sulfate or SCS. And so this is a pretty good surfactant. It produces really nice big bubbles, but it can be mildly irritating to people. There's much gentler versions available like SLSA or SCI. I'm pretty sure you can use those instead if you wanted to, but we're trying to recreate Lush here. So that's what we're using today. And whenever I make cosmetics, I always use distilled water. Distilled water is free of all the minerals that you would find in tap water. Even tap water that you have softened with a water softener might still have microbes and other weird things in it from your taps. Before I add my surfactant, I'm actually going to color these guys using the tiniest little bit of water soluble dye. And I think the two colors that they use are blue and pink. So I'm going to be using these two blue one and hot pink dye from Fizz Fairy. So for this, you're gonna to wanna to use the tiniest bit, like the smallest little crumb possible, because if you don't, it's gonna end up too dark. So literally, just like specks, like empty, empty your spoon or whatever you're gonna to use to lift it out. Just tap it so that you get out all, as much excess as possible. And whatever's left on your measuring spoon or whatever, that's what you tap into your water to color it. So I don't know if you can see that. I have like the smallest flecks of blue. That's good enough for me. I'm just going to stir to disperse it. That might be a little too light. Let me do another couple of flecks. I always, always go overboard. So that's why I'm being super careful. See like, I think that might've been too much. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do? So this is the color I get, a very, very pale blue. Let's do the same for the pink, hot pink. And I'm gonna put that in this one. So I got a little bit of dye on my gloves. Let me just rinse this off before proceeding so that I don't get dye on everything. So here are my two colors of my soap jelly. And so to this, I will be adding my surfactant. So this sodium cocoa sulfate comes in these really tiny noodles. You can use a coffee grinder to turn it into a more powder consistency, which would make melting these in the water a lot easier, but we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna melt the noodles and see what happens. And a lot of people, when they complain about Lush being too harsh, a lot of the time it's because their skin might be sensitive to harsher surfactants like SES or SLS, which are the normal surfactants that Lush tends to use. There's one color, color number two. So these guys we're going to heat up and melt over a water bath so these SCS noodles can melt down into the water. But when I come back, everything will be melted. Sorry if it's a little noisy. I have the water and the SCS going in a water bath off to the side here. So while that's going, I'm actually going to mix in my carrageenan with my glycerin. So remember, these are the ingredients that make soap a soap jelly. Without these two, you probably won't be able to achieve the same results as what Lush has. I've seen a lot of people using gelatin 
like the beef gelatin, agar agar, with varying degrees of success. So we'll see how my version will work. Fingers crossed. And when looking around for carrageenan, you might run into different versions of it. The version that I bought is the iota carrageenan. And this one produces a bit of a stiffer jelly than the other ones. You can still create jellies with the other versions of carrageenan, but this is the one that works the best. So we're just gonna add this to the glycerin. And now that that's added, we're going to carefully stir to incorporate it and to dissolve it into the glycerin. And it's turning into that same tan color that we saw in Lush's How We Make Things video. So I'm guessing this is what they do as well. And you'll want to stir to get all of those clumps broken up. So once we add this to the water, the carrageenan will have more time to bind with the water and not blob it up. So once the SCS noodles are all melted, then we can add this to our water and surfactant mixture. The SEI melted down pretty quickly. And once it gets down to this clear state, to this we're going to add our carrageenan and glycerin mix. So just add this right in here. And then once that's added, we're just gonna stir so that we can get everything nicely incorporated. And then we're going to boil this. And I don't know if I can get this hot enough in the measuring cup itself. So we're actually gonna pour this into a pot and boil it so that we can get it as hot as it needs to. Cause that's the thing, it needs to boil in order for it to turn into gelatin. Anything less than that and you're gonna have a soupy mess on your hands. So I'm gonna transfer this to a small pot and get that going on my hot plate, which is over to the side over there. <laughs> so here's my small pot. I'm just going to add this. And here, oh, it's already jellifying. Whoa. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the texture is quite thick already. We need to boil this so that it can get solid. So that's what we're working with so far. It's already quite jelly. <laughs> and I'll come back once it's all boiled. And then we'll move on to the next step. So while it's heating up, we're going to prepare our last group of ingredients, which includes our fragrance oil, our preservative, and the mica that causes the shimmery consistency that you see in the Twilight Jelly Soaps. So we're going to be using Optifin Plus today as our preservative. Optifin Plus can withstand temperatures a little bit hotter than Liquid Germal Plus, so that's why I'm using it. For the fragrance, because Twilight is a lavender scent, I'm going to be using Fizz Fairy's Garden Gloves, which is an amazing floral scent that has lavender and lilac tones to it. It's one of my favorite fragrances to use right now. It's, it's amazing. And we're gonna use that blended with a little bit of lavender essential oil as well. And the lavender essential oil we are going to be using today is lavender 4042. In their recipe, they had benzoin resinoid listed as one of their last ingredients. So we'll be using that today. I have it warming here in some hot water so I can get it out of the bottle easier. It has the consistency of molasses. So once it's warmed, it should come out of the bottle much easier like that. And it smells kind of like vanilla. It's like a sweet, warm scent. So we're gonna be adding this last to our jelly. And I'm also going to get my mold ready. And at first I was looking at fun molds I can use to make my jelly soaps. But then when I watched Lush's how-to video, I realized they actually pour the soap jelly mixture directly into the containers that they sell them in, which is genius. Thankfully, I was able to find nearly identical containers from Windy Point Soap Supplies. And I have them linked in my description box below if you're curious to check them out. But these are pretty much the same ones. So I'm gonna pour them into these guys once everything is ready. 
So this is what it looks like after it's been heating up over the stove for a bit and the color is turning into something I don't really quite like so I'm gonna add some more color to this and for that I'm going to actually add some mica and this is midnight blue mica from Fizz Fairy. I'm just gonna add a little bit to get it to the color that I want and with anything just start small and we are getting that dark blue color I might add something to make it more of a lighter blue we're adding some Caribbean blue mica now and we are getting closer to that color I want and we're gonna do the same for the pink because the color has really faded down and for this, we're gonna use Little Diva Mica. And we're just gonna stir that in. So you can see I have clumps of carabinin in my mixture. And that's probably because I didn't disperse it enough in the glycerin. So next time I make these, I'm gonna do a better job of that. Once it gets to clumps like this, it's really hard to get them to dissolve once they've hit the water. So that's my bad. So here's how it looks so far. You can see we've got some great blue coloring, which is awesome. But to get that really sparkly, twinkly look, we're actually gonna add some more mica, but this one has a special ingredient in it, that being Fleur Flogopite. For Flogopite, hopefully I'm saying that right. But this adds the most beautiful shimmer to anything you put into it. A lot of people like to add it to their bath bombs to make a beautiful shimmer in the water. So we are going to add just a little bit of that to, to each pot and stir that in. And that looks really, really beautiful. Oh my gosh, it actually lightened up the mix. Wow. And this Sparkle Me Blue Mica that has Fleur Flogopite in it is from Mad Micas. Just add a little bit, we're gonna stir, and it just makes everything beautifully iridescent. So now let's wait for this to boil. And once it gets to the boiling point, we'll add our other ingredients and then pour it into our molds. So we've got a really good boil going. And what we're gonna do now is transfer this back into our measuring cup so that we can more easily pour this into our containers. All right, so our jelly mix is boiling. I'm gonna turn that off and it looks like that. I'm gonna give it another stir and then put this back into our measuring cup. Pour it into here. Scrape all of that out. Whoa, that looks really, really cool. And we're gonna do the same for the pink. <laughs> this one was really boily. <laughs> I'm gonna pour that into here. And we're gonna take the measurements of these guys to see how hot they are. Okay, so we're around 190. So we'll let these cool just a little bit. Continuing to stir. <laughs> I'm double stirring right now. I think the colors are pretty good. You can see how the florflogo you can see how the florflogopite is causing the most beautiful iridescent look to the jelly soap. It's actually pretty awesome. Let me get this a little bit closer, you can see. That's just so beautiful. That was blue, and here's pink. Gorgeous, wow. And as it continues to cool, it will start to harden, so hopefully we can get this cool enough. All right, we're good for blue. We're gonna add our preservative and fragrance oil to this. And stir. So you want to stir pretty thoroughly to get everything incorporated. You want this to be a solid jelly by the end of it. Oh, it's starting to 
really glob up a little bit. And let's see how the pink is doing because we want to be pouring these at the same time. All right, we are good for pink. Add this to pink. We're going to stir until this is all incorporated, just like with the blue. Oh, it smells so nice. All right, I think we've got it all stirred in nicely. And now we're going to pour into our little cups here, our containers. I think we're gonna need more than two though. Looks like I might need four. BRB. We got four here that we're gonna pour. Let's start with, I think, pink, and then we'll pour the blue. Just take out the spatulas. Let's go pink, and then we're gonna go blue, and we're gonna go pink again, and we're gonna go blue again. <laughs> this looks really cool. I hope I'm getting a good shot of this. Hold on. Can you see? Oh, we can get much closer. Perfect. All right, let's do that again. Pink, then blue. Pink. And blue. <laughs> oh gosh, it's getting very, very stiff. Do you see that, guys? Pink, and then blue, then pink. Do it together. <laughs> Do a double pour. There you go. And then this last one, pink, and then blue. Double pour action. And then we're, I'm gonna need to scrape stuff out here because it's getting very, very globby. Get out of there. Let's get this going into here and then we'll add more blue to here maybe here too so here is what i poured into these containers and from the tops of it they're kind of chunky because they started to get super cool on me remember i don't have those industrial dispensers that make the job probably way easier but also they're able to keep the soap jelly mixture uh, more fluid for longer. But I think I might have nailed how the two colors come together. So that's cool. Now what we do with these jellies is cool them down. And then once they're cool, hopefully we have soap jelly. I think it's looking pretty promising so far because even though um, they're not cooled down yet, they're pretty, <laughs> they look like jelly already. So we are well on our way, I think, but Still got a ways to go. All right, so I'm gonna stick these babies into a fridge and then I'll come back and show you the results. So here is the jelly solidified after a few hours later. And just looking at them, they definitely solidified into a jelly. To get them out, it should just work like a jello shot. They should pop out. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we pop them out, if you look at just the top of them, I think the two colors stayed separate and from the sides, I think we're gonna have some really cool blending between the two colors. So let's just, let's unmold these and see what they look like. So I'm going to unmold one. And when I'm looking at these four, I think this one kind of looks like the gnarliest. The others I'm going to be gifting. Let's unmold this together by I think I'm just gonna slam it down and see if it comes out. Oh, that's not working. <laughs> All right, let's give it a shake. Oh, here it comes. I think it's coming loose. Oh, okay, here we go, here we go. Oh! <laughs> it just tumbled out. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we definitely have a soap jelly. <laughs> Okay, I'll come here, take a look at what I made. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not want to touch that? <laughs> do you want to touch it? You can, can touch I, can, it. Can yes, I, this I is ours. Like this? Can I claw it? You can claw it if you want to. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's get a close look of you doing that. Ooh, it's cold too. It was in the fridge. It's cold at the touch. That's because it was in the <laughs> It feels funny. <laughs> Whoa. That's a really cool product. So judging from what I've seen of the Lush videos, this is very close to what I've seen. Where 
it moves <laughs> just like it. And you can see the colors look so close to the Twilight shower jelly. I am extremely, extremely pleased with the outcome. But it's not just a jelly we made, we've made a soap jelly, which means hopefully this thing soaps and lathers. That's the other test you've got to do. Are you willing to be my, my model and my tester? For that, I'm willing to. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a very pleasing texture. I just want to show you guys a close-up of how cool that mica coloring is. It definitely mimics the sheen and shimmer that the Twilight Jelly has, and it just looks so cool. I can't believe this turned out so good. I really want to show how these guys wiggle in slow motion like those Lush commercials. So here we go. When you hold on to the jelly, it's also not wet. It's like a powdery, dry feel. The beauty of the two colors blending together really, really shines through. I think that's just so mesmerizing to look at. A super fun thing to add to your shower. I can't stop playing with it. I'm holding it in my hand and squeezing it, Kale. It's really tempting to just squeeze it and squish it, but I, I'm not going to. But it feels very satisfying in your hand. <laughs> yeah, almost like gack, huh? Gack, yeah. Slime, yeah. stress balls, everything. So I guess it's safe to say we don't absolutely need propylene glycol for it to form into a jelly, a stiff jelly that's stiff enough to, to hold in your hand. So for the jelly test it passed, the true test will be how it lathers in the shower. <laughs> can you hear it? Look, I can even toss it between my hands. <laughs> oh. What if I catch it? You probably can. No, these are too hard to make. I don't wanna wreck them. Let's get this in the shower. I've played with this enough. <laughs> Sorry, it's just jiggling so much. All right, I'm gonna put it back in its vessel. Oh, okay, that's fine. It's fine like that. We're in our bathroom because we are going to be testing the shower jelly. And Kale's going to be my model and test it out. And I just took a shower like an hour and a half ago. He did. Like a real shower. He's doing this all for the video and for you guys. All right, let's uh, get you in there. So I'm gonna hand this off to Kale. Oh, nice. So it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Okay. How does it feel? It feels good. I like the texture of it. It's nice and smooth. Yeah. Like it's. <laughs> it's like I'm using a smooth soap. It's called floor flog floor flog go pipe. And that's what's causing the, the beautiful uh, shimmer there. Right. So out of 10, how would you rate this product? This is a solid 9.5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good product. Yay. I would keep this around. Success. And when you're done with it, you can use the plastic container it came in to store it so that it doesn't disintegrate and dissolve into your shower. <laughs> so that is it. I think it's safe to say that this project was a very jiggly, wriggly success. And I'm very, very happy that I was able to make these because they are causing me a lot of happiness right now just playing around with it. If you want the exact recipe and the steps and everything that I used in this guide, that is all on my Patreon, which is linked down below. Speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons, to everyone and anyone who has chosen to support me on there. You guys are absolutely the best, especially my bold BFFs. These guys are so generous and kind and sweet. And your stories and comments and feedback are so valuable to me. So thank you to each and every one of you guys. You guys are the best. And I hope you enjoy this recipe because I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so that is it. If you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. 
And don't forget to leave a comment down below if you really enjoyed this or you hated it or whether or not you make jelly soaps yourself. Do you make them the same way that I do? Let me know. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and keep making beautiful, fun things like jelly soaps that wiggle around really satisfyingly. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs> it's like he's waving bye to you guys because he's wiggling so much. Oh, look at him turn. Oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa. There's a lot of torque on this, and he is holding firm. Wow. <laughs>